I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto, get out the insurance cards, get out the Copec. The office, it's open, my friends. Man, it's Waiver Wire Wednesday. They come up so quickly. Here we are. It's week 10. I don't know. Sometimes I just like to sit back and say, oh my God, I can't believe that we're 10 weeks into the season. We wait all year for fantasy football. And our seasons could be over in the next four weeks. 10, 11, 12, 13. You don't make the playoffs. We're done. I mean, you're never done because we have DFS. And I think that's one of the beauties of Scout Fantasy is that we can help you both seasonal and daily. But we spend all this time and all this energy in our football teams. It seems like baseball lasts forever, right? Baseball goes to November, like March till November. The NBA goes, I mean, June, oh my, it lasts forever and a day. But the NFL is just, boom, here it is and then it's gone. So it's a little sad. So I don't want to get that depressed. I mean, we still have four weeks. I got to get you guys to this fantasy playoffs. I got to get you to some league championships. So let's take a look at the waiver wire and start out at the quarterbacks. I've never really been a Jay Cutler fan. You know, I originally called him Grumpy Cat when I first started with Scout a couple of years ago. It's one of my favorite videos that our friend Jonathan and Marion did to uh, did for me. It just it was great. They put a picture of Jay Cutler and they put a picture of Grumpy Cat. And you're like, he looks just like the cat. But this week he plays Tampa Bay. And I'm not sure that my local middle school team couldn't score 20 points on Tampa Bay's defense. I'm not sure of that. I think they possibly could. So with that in mind, Jay Cutler becomes a very interesting play this week, not only in daily, but in seasonal. So if you're looking for a free agent this week, a quick fill-in, a guy who can help, I think that guy can be Jay Cutler against Tampa Bay. Can't really run against Tampa Bay, but you can throw against Tampa Bay. How about Cody Kessler? Now, I've gone on record by saying I think you Jackson is crazy. And I think he needs to be playing Josh McCown. But maybe he's not crazy because he wants the number one pick in the draft. And maybe he knows his team's not very good. He goes and he'll get Deshaun Watson from Clemson or somebody like that. And he'll have a winning team. So you put Kessler in. But Kessler's going to be... How about if I tell you that his numbers could be similar to Blake Bortles? Garbage time stuff. Garbage time stats. And... It says Hugh Jackson wants Cody Kessler throwing deeper. Well, of course he does because he's got Terrell Pryor and and Corey Coleman there. So if you're really looking for a play, why not Cody Kessler? It could be a lot worse. Colin Kaepernick won't play the Saints every week. You only wish that he would. But Trevor Simeon will. Trevor Simeon's playing the Saints this week. I don't like Trevor Simeon. But against the Saints, I like anybody. Colin Kaepernick went for almost 400 yards, and then he ran for a bunch. So I think Kaepernick and Simeon, both interesting plays. How about one more quarterback for you? I can't believe these two words are coming out of my mouth. Brock All right, all kidding aside, have you seen his schedule? Have you seen the Texans' schedule? I mean, I've covered it more than once, but let me cover it yet again. Because I'm telling you, they play the easiest schedule. Jacksonville, Oakland, San Diego, Green Bay, Indianapolis, Jacksonville, Cincinnati. You think you can win with that? If he only knew how to throw... Tom Brady would, would, would be uh, this is, you know, the MVP with that schedule. He's going to be the MVP without it, but he'll be the MVP with it for sure. All right. At running back. Rob Kelly... R. Kelly, I believe he will get this job, or at least I believe he'll get it this week. I don't love his matchup this week. It's okay, but he'll get the opportunities. Next, Paul Perkins. Now, last week, he had the same number of carries as Rashad Jennings. He had the same number of targets as Rashad Jennings. The Giants need lightning in a bottle, and Rashad Jennings is crap in a bottle. He's crap on a stick. He's not lightning in a bottle. Paul Perkins is lightning in a bottle. Paul Perkins can make a big play. Rashad Jennings can't. 
Now, I know you want your veterans to play. I know you want veteran leadership. I understand that. I get it. But at the end of the day, talent wins. And Paul Perkins has talent. And Rashad Jennings doesn't. It's as simple as that. I think he's an interesting player. I don't love him, but I think he can get better as the season moves forward. How about Capri Bibbs? My favorite poor name of the week, Capri Bibbs. So his touchdown reception was, was really impressive. And I think Denver's searching for offense right now. They can't find any. Now, I like Devontae Booker, but don't you think that Capri Bibbs is going to get an opportunity? Now, I think he's going to be the most volatile player of this week in free agency. He could go for $100 and give you $400 worth, worth, worth of value. He could go for $40 and give you, you know, $2 worth of value. I don't know. I don't know. I know that I want to own him because I want to see what he can do for me. So I'm willing to pay, but I'm not going to overpay. I got four more weeks to get through. So I can't just, I'm not going to throw it all on a Capri Bibbs. I'm just not. I'll throw something on Capri Bibbs, but not all of it. Chris Ivory, I mean, he ran for 100 yards at last week. I don't particularly like the guy, but, I mean, he is he's out there in many leagues. I know I dropped him on one league, so you can certainly have him. I'm not a big fan, but, hey, worst guy's out there. Deion Lewis, I know a lot of people scooped him up in main event teams, but if he's available, I think the Patriots will work him in slowly. They'll work him in slowly because they want him in the playoffs. But how does this affect James White? I think it's a big effect for James White. Big. Big. Huge. How about James Starks? Nobody talks about James Starks. But when Eddie Lacy was out last year, James Starks was in. James Starks knows that offense, and he'll get 15, 20 carries a game. Even if he only runs for 39 yards. Mike McCarthy will continue to give it to him. So I think he's interesting. How about Thomas Rawls? Thomas Rawls, to me, is, is, is a very, very intriguing player for the following reason. I think Kristen Michael's starting to slow down a little bit. Just a little bit. And Rawls is going to come back in the next week or two. And Seattle's looking to jumpstart that offense. If I told you that Thomas Rawls was starting at the end of the, uh, by, the end, by week 14, would you be shocked? I don't think I'd be shocked. So that's why I like him. How about Wendell Smallwood? I think Wendell Smallwood is very, very interesting this week. I think Ryan Matthews is done. He's shot. It's over. Darren Sproles, not the biggest dude out there. I think Wendell Smallwood, I've held him. I went, I paid for him, and I held him. I think it's going to pay off. I think the two guys who are going to pay off are Perkins and Smallwood. I do. I just think there's too much talent there not to pay off. At wide receiver, if J.J. Nelson is out there in your league, please go get him. Please go get him. I think he's really helped Carson Palmer a lot. He's a very quick guy. I think it's energized that offense to go with him and John Brown. John Brown's healthy. I like him and Fitz. Michael Floyd was making too many drops. I like, I like where we are right now with J.J. Nelson. How about Marquise Lee? How about Marquise Lee right now? How many weeks have I been saying he's one injury away from being a star? And what do we, what, lo and behold, Alan Hearns dealing with a concussion. Will Alan Hearns play? I don't know. I'm not sure. He might. But what if he doesn't? If he doesn't, whoever has Marquise Lee is going to be the beneficiary of a really good game. How about Robert Woods? Robert Woods is another guy who I didn't think much of coming into this year. But Sammy Watkins got injured. Sammy Watkins got injured. And how good was Robert Woods... On Monday night. And the thing about Robert Woods is you can get him at a discount this week because they're on buy. So if this if he was playing this week, he would go for easily three, four, five hundred dollars. But you might be able to get him at a 65 to 70, you know, 70% of his value. So instead of 300, maybe you get him at 210. I'll take the discount. Why not? Same player, but I think I can get a discount because I have to sit on him for a week. There's no value to him for a week. How about Eli Rogers? So let's just discuss Sammy Coates. I think the thing for receivers is you can learn to run a route. You can learn the route tree. But you can't have better hands. I think hands are your hands. 
you might be able to improve your speed. Maybe you go from a 4.4 to a 4.3. Maybe you run better routes. But at the end of the day, you either are a natural catcher of the football or you're not. Sammy Coates is not. There's nothing we can do about that. But I think, and I think Ben Roethlisberger is smart enough to know that. And I think he's smart enough to realize that, hey, this, this Eli Rogers kid, you know what? He might be pretty good. He might be pretty good. So I'm interested in Eli Rogers if he's available. I am. How about Adam Humphreys? So we've discussed this before, but let's just bring up the theory again. When you've got a star number one receiver and no real number two receiver or, no, or slot receiver, one of two things happens. The opposing defense either double covers the number one guy and forces somebody else to beat them, or they let that guy get all the, the receptions and they cover everybody else. Well, Adam Humphreys is that guy. He's the guy if teams double cover Evans, Humphreys is going to get the ball. So if he's available in your league, he could be really worth something. I don't love him, but I like him enough. I think he's interesting. How about Jalen Marshall? The law firm of Marshall and Marshall, Brandon and Jalen. Sharon Peak didn't exist anymore. I still do like Robbie Anderson, but who caught that touchdown last week was Jalen Marshall. Jalen Marshall was the third receiver before he got injured. So I'm just saying with Jalen Marshall back, I do like Robbie Anderson, but I think Marshall's number three. It's Brandon one, Nunwood two, Jalen three. Sneaky play on the waiver wire. How about Ted Yin? I had a fantasy funeral for Devin Funches the other day. He's done for me this year. Done. I might play him again next year, but not this year. I think Ted Ginn is a legitimate number two receiver there for the Carolina Panthers. Yes, there's Greg Olson. Yes, there's Kelvin Benjamin. And I think the next guy, then receiver number two, is Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn just finds a way to get open. And Cam Newton trusts Ted Ginn. So we have to say, just because I don't trust Ted Ginn doesn't mean that Cam doesn't. And Cam is, it's more important for Cam to like him than me to like him. You, get, you understand? If Cam likes him, that's good enough for me. How about Eddie Casino Royale? Or how about Eddie Royale with cheese? Or you fill in your Eddie Royal Flush? Like any of those? I like all those nicknames, by the way. He's going to be back. And when he comes back, Eddie, Eddie Royal is good for like three or four big games a year. Let's see. Let's, let's, go to the, let's go to the videotape here for a second. So let's see. Eddie Royal. One moment, please. Please hold. Eddie Royal, very questionable, very questionable. He took part in Monday's practice. I'd like to see that. This year, he only had one big game. He's due for two more. He's due for two more. He's got Tampa, the Giants, Tennessee, San Francisco, Detroit, Green Bay, Washington, Minnesota. He's good for three a year. I see him with two more. Maybe it'll just be on your team. Maybe it won't, but what if it was? All right, a tight end. Why can you never trust coaches and reporters? Last week, Carson Wentz is not connecting with Zach Ertz. Oh my God, they're just not connecting. Eight for 97. That looked like a good connection for me. And now they're saying, we don't want Carson Wentz to pass that much. Well, you're losing in games. You're losing in games, that's why. That's why you're passing so much. So if Zach Ertz is out there, I think he's interesting. I wouldn't pay big bucks for Zach Ertz, but I'd pay a couple bucks for Zach Ertz. You know, what if he goes 5 for 60 this week? So 11 points might help you. How about this kid, Austin Hooper? I am all in on Austin Hooper. If I couldn't have Hunter Henry, I'd want Austin Hooper in, in Dynasty. I love me some Hunter Henry. You know that. But Austin Hooper is not a bad little player right there. I like him. I do. I like him. How about Virgil Green? Virgil. Virgil Green is the third most targeted receiver on the Denver Broncos outside of Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. So Kubiak likes throwing to the tight ends. Trevor Simeon, when he's not monking around, likes to throw to the tight ends. So Virgil Green, I think, has a little bit more value than we all think he does. And then finally, let's stay that's all green. It's not easy being green. It's not easy being Ladarius Green. Jesse James is, has been all right, but he's more of a stopgap than a star. And Ben Roethlisberger knows it. And the fact that Sammy Coates can't catch and Marcus Wheaton's untrustworthy, how badly does that team need Martavis Bryant? But they have Eli Rogers, 
and they have Ladarius Green, who they shelled out a lot of money for in the offseason. So I think it's going to be very interesting when Green comes back to see his role in this offense. I think it could be bigger than we all think. I do. I think it could be bigger than we all think. So he's an interesting pickup. All right. Let's take a look at some news. What's going on in the news in the NFL? Tony Romo cleared. Tony Romo cleared. What does that mean? It means he's ready to play if he plays. It's not a medical decision. It's, is he good enough? Right? Is he good enough? All right, Carlos Hyde, still not ready for, for contact. Dewan Harris looked very good last week. So you know what? If that's the case, they're not rushing Carlos Hyde back at all. They're taking their sweet... Carlos, you just make sure you're 110% before we bring you back there. All right, Mark Ingram and Tim Hightower are going to split carries. They're going to go to the hot hand. We saw what Sean Payton did with Mark Ingram. He got him riled up, dude. He was riled up. When he was running for that touchdown, you knew he was scoring. He's like, F, F this, Sean Payton. I'm all in. I'm all in for a touchdown. Right? Shaquiz Rogers, big long shot for Week 10. I'm not in on him. I'm in on Doug Martin. And I think it looks like Spencer Ware will be ready to play because Charkandrick West stunk. Stunk with a capital unk. That was not very good. Just wasn't. Mike Tomlin says Ben Roethlisberger isn't 100%. You think? The first three quarters he didn't play like Ben Roethlisberger. I don't even know who that was on the field. They're playing Dallas this week. They better beat Dallas. They better beat Dallas. All right, it's Waiver Wire Wednesday. I want you to be very cognizant of the other people in your league, how much you need to spend, what are you going to go in for, what's it worth to you. Be smart. Be smart with your bidding. Got three more weeks to go after this one. 11, 12, 13. If you have $382, don't be spending $381 on Capri Bibs. You will regret it. You will regret it. So if I had $381 and I wanted Capri Bibs, I probably would spend $200 and something. I'd leave me some money for the next three weeks. I would. And I'd be, I'd be very hesitant about that $200 bid, but I would do it if I needed it. If I was desperate, and I would do what I needed to do. All right? Do what you need to do, but be smart about it. It's the best advice I can give at this point. But right now, it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office, it's closed, my friends. Can't wait for tomorrow. We'll go over the bidding and wars and how much guys cost. And, of course, we'll look at the Thursday night game, the Browns against the Ravens. That just looks like a slop fest if I've ever seen one. But what can we do? I also want to encourage you to check out scoutfantasy.com. Enter one of two promo codes. Promo code ROTO, that's R-O-T-O, or RONIS, R-O-N-I-S. Looking forward to be back on the radio with those guys in a couple of days. And, of course, my man Jason Braddock. There's no, road code. There's no promo code for Braddock. We'll have to figure that one out. Um, we'll talk about that at some point. But we want you to be a member of the Scout Army. We want you to win. We want you to watch. look our scout scores for DFS. It's a way to guide you into knowing whether or not you're getting good value for your money. Is a player worth the amount? It's important. You know, Jarvis Landry, people liked him last week, but at 7100 it's too expensive. We'll start checking out some daily as well coming up. I never really start getting into daily until Thursday. I'm so concerned about waiver wires early in the week that I can't get my help. I can't get into daily. Maybe late Wednesday night I start putting some teams together. Right before I got to get ready for the radio and I really start to like get invested. But I'm sure you guys will do well. I'm sure you guys will hit the waiver wire. I wish you a good Wednesday. We're back tomorrow doing our thing, Scout Army style. So this is Dr. Roto saying be well, take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit scoutfantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!